So in this video, we are going to start from the ground up and talk about what are some of the first things you should do with your ukulele. And this can apply to someone who's brand new with the instrument. So if you've never played before, you're in the right place. But also if you're a more experienced player, maybe wanting to teach a friend or just get some of the basics, you know, down pat, this can also be very helpful. The first thing you might notice is if you watch my videos, you know, before you'll notice I'm usually sitting in a chair. And today I, I'm in a stool. One of the most important things you can do when you're learning the ukulele and you're starting to build good habits is have a proper seating setup. If you're seated, seated in a couch and leaning way back, uh, it's tough to really develop good habits as a player. So the number one tip I recommend before you even pick up the ukulele is make sure you're sitting somewhere that can allow you to use good posture. We want our back to be more straight than not. Piano bench is great. A lot of desk chairs are good that can, you know, give you that lumbar support or whatever else. But that's why I'm going to be sitting in the stool for the duration of today's lesson. So let's go ahead and pick up our ukuleles. Now, if you don't know how to tune this thing and you're watching this as a replay, there's a link down below that talks about how to tune it. But let's start with how to hold this thing. And uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I think that holding the ukulele is the hardest part of playing it. Truly. Like, it took me years to get comfortable with. This instrument's just not, it's awkward. It, it's just not intuitive to hold. So step one, as you're learning to hold, is you need to check, sleeve check. See, I've got sleeves on, right? I'm gonna roll up these sleeves. Now, it really only matters on your strumming hand to do this, but the reason is we're going to be using our skin, which has much better friction than the clothes when we're bracing and holding the uke. A lot of times people will be playing with a sleeve and the uke slips away and they're trying to figure out why. That'll help. So now you're gonna take your ukulele and what you're going to do is you're going to take this lower bout right here and you're going to set it on your thigh, your right thigh if you're a right player. And as you do this, as you set it on your thigh, you're going to bring it back towards your body until it kind of stops. But notice how there's still a gap here between the back of the ukulele and my chest. It's kind of stopping at like the tuft of the clothes here. Now, this is the critical step. When we are holding the uke, we're going to take this lower bout right here and we're going to bring it back towards ourselves so that it touches our chest like this. But as it does that, it's still leaving the back of the instrument exposed. So much sound comes from the back. And if you mute it by, by pressing it up against your body, you will get substantially less sound. And this is the number one mistake new players and more experienced players do you know, make as well. And so now what I've done here is I've kind of pinched this and this up against my chest with this being on my thigh. It's okay if yours looks a little different than this, but you just wanna make sure you're not doing this. This is bad. So the next step here is looking at the headstock. You wanna be about a 45 degree angle to everything. And that's just going to allow you to get the best tone as you're using different techniques. If you're down like this, it can be really hard to do a lot of techniques. If you're up like this, same sort of deal. The 45 degree angle just gives you a good balance between everything. The last step there is the fretboard here. You'll notice I kind of tilt a little bit. That gives me some line of sight. My fingers can now see what my, or my fingers, my eyes can see what my fingers are doing as I go through this. And that can be really helpful just to make sure you're seeing where you're going. But now that's what it looks like holding the ukulele. And this is where it blows people's minds. You're looking at me in two dimensions and it looks like my ukulele is straight towards you and I'm straight towards you, right? But the reality is my shoulders are turned right now because I'm trying to show you the ukulele. If I sat straight to the camera, it would look like this. Now my shoulders are squared, my legs are squared right towards you. And you can see that the ukulele is out because I'm trying to expose that back and I'm trying to make sure I'm tilted and at that angle. So something really important to consider as you're playing. Think of all this as like a, you know, a mouth guard. You can get a general size, but you gotta, you gotta get it custom for your own teeth. This is like that store-bought mouth guard size. Now you have to adjust it for your teeth, get it molded the right way. So if you go a little down or a little up, a little in, a little out, that's all okay. As long as some of the back is exposed there to maximize that sound. I truly think this is the hardest part of holding or playing the ukulele is holding it. So if this is tricky, it's all okay. So that's our basic form there. If you're holding a big ukulele, like a baritone for instance, um, or you're maybe a smaller person holding a bigger ukulele, it's okay to be a little bit more guitar-like at times. Usually that means that the neck's gonna go down. A lot of times with a guitar, you can just kind of set it on your leg like this. 
Very rarely is this correct with an ukulele though. Um, you know, if you're playing a really big ukulele and you're a really small person, maybe you can get away with it. But it's really difficult to do everything when the ukulele is sort of held like this all the time. Getting it upright really maximizes tone and those sort of pinch points, right? So now that we are holding the ukulele, maybe not comfortably yet, but that's what practice is for, let's go ahead and learn a song. And we're going to learn how to play this chord progression for one of my favorite tunes using only a single finger. So this is a great party trick too, because if you bring your ukulele, maybe you're a more advanced player and you wanna teach somebody how to play, tell them that they can learn with one finger. What we're going to do is we're gonna take our fretting hand. So if you're playing right-handed, which is how most people play, even a lot of left-handed people play right-handed, you're going to take your left index finger and you're going to place it on the third fret of the A string. So what this means is if you look at your ukulele, you have four strings. They go from G, C to E to A. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. Just look at that lowest string, the one towards the ground. That is your A string. And we're going to take that index finger and we're going to place it onto the third fret of the A string. And what this means is you'll see these two wires. We're going to go one, two, three, go to the third one, and we're gonna push that finger down to compress the string. Now a mistake that a lot of even advanced players make is they don't push in the right place. A lot of times people think, oh, I just gotta push in the middle, right? No, not quite. What you wanna do is get right up next to that fret wire. No matter where you're at, it's always good to do that because it's going to give you the best tone. If I push right there, see how I'm getting right up next to the fret wire. Again, not going over the wire, but right up next to it. And I push and play, it might sound like this. Now, I'm not pushing any harder or lighter, and I'm just gonna move it down in the fret a little bit. Hear how it's buzzing? That's because I'm not playing it efficiently enough. Now I can push harder and that buzz will go away, but now I am death gripping the ukulele when I didn't need to be. One of the number one mistakes new players make is they put their finger on, they get a buzz and they push harder. And instead of pushing harder, we wanna push smarter. We wanna move that finger up towards the fret to get that better sound. It's a lot like um, a remote control, you know, uh, if you click a, volume up and it doesn't go on your TV, do you click it again or do you kind of, you know, dig in a little bit? Human beings offset what we lack in understanding with strength. And it's like the crosswalk syndrome of you click the crosswalk button and it doesn't turn. Do you go over there and click it again or do you smack it a couple times, right? It's just what we do. And so with this, we want to get really comfortable with press pressing in the correct spot. So we're going to be fretting that third fret on the A string. And then we're going to take our strumming hand, we're gonna take our thumb, and we're just going to strum through all four strings. The position of the thumb as you do this, it doesn't really matter. It's okay right now. You can do it however you want, but we're just playing through all four strings. This is called a C chord. You don't have to remember that name right now because what we're going to do is immediately move it to another chord. We're gonna take that index finger and we're going to do it, move it down one fret to the second fret of the A string. And you wanna make sure, again, you're right next to that fret wire as you do this. So we can play this chord and then this one. This chord name is C major seven. Name's not too important. Sounds nice though, doesn't it, right? And then we're going to move that down again to fret one. Same deal, making sure we're right next to the fret wire. Just so you know, the hardest notes to fret on this instrument are the lowest numbers. Therefore, the first fret is the hardest one to fret. And it also happens to be the one you fret the most when you're learning to play. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're playing that if it's hard to fret that, that's normal. Uh, and just make sure you're getting right up next to that fret wire. And then after we played this chord, we're going to go to our last chord. All that we do is take this index finger and we move it up one string to what's called our E string. So you'll notice I'm still on that first fret and I'm just going to be jumping up to the first fret on the E string. Now, really, really important with this is you wanna make sure that your finger is very articulate so that you don't touch the A string. See how I'm using the very tip of the finger. I'm not letting it come down like this, but getting that right at the tip perpendicular. That's gonna not only give you a good tone on the E string, but it's also gonna let the A string ring open, which is the most important step to what we're looking at right now with this chord. And this one's called an F add nine. Names are not important right now, unless you wanna remember them, in which case F add nine. 
But let's go and try these four chords again, and let's try strumming four times on each one. So we'll start, that index finger is gonna jump up to the third fret on the A string right there. And we're gonna strum through this four times, then we're gonna switch four times, switch four times, switch four times, and then we can start back over. It'll sound something like this. One, two, three, four. One. Switch. 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 Let's do that again, back to the first chord. Switch. Switch. Now, does anyone in chat know what this song is called? If you do, go ahead and leave a comment as we practice it just one more time here. It's a really pretty little sound, isn't it? Well, it's this song right here. Something by the Beatles, which is really awesome. It's just one finger moving down and you can play the song and sing it or play it. In my case, I don't really sing much, but you know, it's the something in the way she moves. Attracts me like no other lover, right? It's really simple, really straightforward using just a single finger, which makes it for a really, really nice little party trick, right? Now, if you wanna take this to the next level, all that you have to do is assign one finger per fret. And this is kind of our first little rule with ukulele playing. When we can, we try to assign one finger per fret, and that means if we're going to play the third fret, we're going to use our third finger, the ring finger here. If we play the second fret, we're going to use our middle finger. If we use the first fret, we're gonna use our index finger. So what that looks like is the ring finger here on the third fret of the A string middle on the second fret of the A, index on the first fret of the A, and then the index moves up to the first fret on the E. Now a tip with this that people never realize, and even advanced players can sometimes miss this. If you're going from fret three like this to fret two, it doesn't matter what happens behind a note when you're playing it. What that means is this third fret being played, it doesn't matter if I put my middle finger here on two on the A, or even my index finger here on one of the A. The only thing that dictates the sound of a note is where you stop, not where you go behind. So I like to do as a little exercise, put my ring finger on and put my middle on and put my index on and leave them all in position. And just take the ring finger away. Now you just take the middle away to leave the index. And then you move it up. This is a great way to start getting comfortable with doing a couple things at once, but also making things more efficient for when you're working on it. You're much less likely to make a mistake when you're doing this if those fingers are in their good positions. And just like that, we're playing our first song, which is the song Something by the Beatles. Now, when you're fretting this, a lot of times people will do it two different ways. They'll either be doing it like I am right now with their thumb squared behind the neck, just like this. And then they're going to be using the tips of the fingers. For some people, this is intuitive. For most, it's not though. A lot of times people are going to be doing it something like this when they start. They'll be kind of cupping the ukulele like so with the thumb coming more over the top. And guess what? Both of these methods are correct for this instrument. And I can't stress this enough. Both are right. Anyone who tells you that this is wrong is probably a guitarist in disguise. The best players in the world all have their thumb up for when they need it to be up. Both ways are correct, depending on the situation. What's fun is this particular situation, both ways work and are correct. So the next sort of thing that you can practice is not just what notes you're playing in the case of these three, but now how you are playing these notes. Are you going to have your thumb more over the top or your thumb more behind? You want to practice both ways. Let's go ahead and look at how we can do this. The first way, the thumb behind, which is harder for most people, so that's why I like to start there. You wanna square your thumb behind the neck about a 45 degree angle, but you know, it can fluctuate. It's less important to be at a certain angle and more important just to be squared behind the neck. 
And then you can take your ring finger or your index, depending on where you want to start with this. And you're going to place it on the third fret of the A string. And what is supporting your ukulele now is the pressure that these two fingers are applying, both of them inward. The index finger is right there going here and the thumb is going in and that creates this nice stable feeling so that my ukulele doesn't fall. And when I go to the next chords, it does this pretty easily. But what you might notice is when you go from this chord to this chord, the uke might want to fall. And that's because the moment you take this finger off, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't like that. <laughs> it wants to fall because the friction of the thumb isn't enough to hold it. And that's where this other technique can come into play. If this is something you're struggling with, with holding the ukulele, what you can also do is use this first knuckle ball right here on your index finger, this point and hold the ukulele neck on that. And what that does is it provides a brace. So now my ukulele is free to move uh, with whatever I'm fretting without risk of it falling to the ground. So that knuckle ball means that my thumb is gonna kind of come over the top. It's not really going to push much as it is just resting and sort of sitting there. And then my fingers can kind of come on. You'll notice my fingers will be kind of more angled towards my right shoulder as I do this. That's very natural with it. When you're more thumb behind, fingers tend to be straight up and down. When you're more like this, fingers tend to be angled. But you can see you can do the same, same stuff. Whether it's that way or this way. So both of those methods are very critical to work on, especially when you're starting out, uh, to kind of sell anybody who might be opposed to this. You know, maybe you're a guitarist who picked up the ukulele and you think this is wrong. Um, you can't play certain things without this technique. And I'm gonna just kind of show you a couple examples of this. But if you, if you don't believe me, just go on Google or YouTube rather and type in Jake Shimabukuro, who I think is probably the best player in the world, and watch him play some songs like Let's Dance and things because he has that thumb up here all the time. I have an original tune that I wrote um, that's called Crossing Hemispheres. I'm gonna play just a little bit of it for you and I want you to just watch my thumb. See how the thumb's up the whole time? There's a very simple reason for this and the reason is, is because if I were to try to square the finger behind the back, the uke would drop when I'm going to open strings and coming off because there's nothing there to brace it and support it other than just that thumb, which isn't enough. At the same time though, if I'm playing something really jazzy, you know, if I'm doing like something like this. Right, when I'm doing that, you notice at the very end, my thumb kicked over because it used some open strings, but for the duration of everything I played there, all these bar chords, you see the thumb squared behind because it has to be to get the right angle here. Because remember, when your thumb is behind, it keeps your hand more straight up and down, which for bar chords is needed. But when you keep your thumb more up here, it allows you to use open strings more so that when you're playing a song that requires that, it's needed. It's pretty cool to realize there's two correct ways to play with this. And just another quick demo, I mentioned that song, uh, Let's Dance by Jake Shimabukuro. If you're playing a part like this. Right, when you're doing something crazy like that, also, it's 9 a.m. on a Saturday. This was a bad idea for me to jump into that song. But when you're doing that, I'm going on and off. I'm literally taking my hand off the ukulele. And when I'm removing the hand from the oop like this, how am I supposed to support it with just the thumb? You can't, you just can't. You have to have that thumb up and above. So I know I'm kind of harping on this, but it's a mistake that a lot of new ukuleles play, a lot of new ukulele players make, either because they came from the guitar where they're taught maybe it's not so correct, or a guitarist told them not to do it. But embrace it, embrace both. So now we know how to hold our ukulele. We know how to play this very basic chord progression, just using one or more fingers, but only one at a time. 
We know that we can use our thumb to kind of strum through and get a nice sound. And then we also know that when we're fretting it, our thumb can kind of be coming up or behind. And with this little toolkit, you should be able to do so much on this instrument. And that's the thing that you really want to take away is, you now have these little tools and go, go find something, go find something fun. Here at Rock Class 101, we have a beginner course, which will be linked down below if you're watching this as a recording. There's other materials here on Rock Class for arrangements and things for beginners. And there's lots of different resources online and check them out and try to find something that you want to play and see if these tricks and tips can help set you on that path. I'm going to open up to any questions that we might have uh, on the YouTube chat. I saw chat going during, uh, during this lesson, so I'm just going to start reading through those. And if you're watching this and have a question, feel free to leave it in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Zill says, oh God, my posture sucks. So real quick note on posture. You want your default posture to be great. What that means is when you practice, most of the time you're practicing with good posture. That being said, it is important to also occasionally practice with bad posture. It sounds crazy, right? But what I mean is you want to practice towards different situations. You want to be able to accommodate things. And the best way to do that is to practice in different environments. Be a little bit distracted sometimes. Be uncomfortable sometimes. Because then when you perform in a situation that's uncomfortable or distracted, you'll have that experience. So a lot of my practice time was on the couch, leaning back, just kind of... Kind of playing, uh, but as long as that's not your dominant, you know, your, <laughs> the most dominant uh, form of practice for you, you'll be fine uh, doing that every once in a while. Um, Zill says, how about holding a giant baritone? It's so huge, my neck hurts from twisting to look at the frets. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's just kind of finding that balance point. Um, you know, I think that uh, finding the point where you can have it twisted just enough to start to see, but not so twisted that you're re reaching your hand over is really important. You might want to lower it and be more in that guitar-like position to get the baritone sounding more comfortable depending on your your body size and everything else too. Ricky says, so far I've got good form. Awesome. Love it. Uh, and then the guesses for the something song Connie was close with. It's a Beatles song. The Beatles song. The title eludes me. Good work. Uh, Zill says, I'm trying to hold the thumb up to the fret uh, up, up to fret the G on a song, but my thumb gets sore. So if you're doing this with like the uh, the G chord, that's a tough one with the thumb, one to, worthwhile practicing, but because it has three different fingers there, G tends to be better like this. My favorite one to practice both is like F, because you can do an F squared behind, and you should also be able to do an F with the thumb up above. And getting really comfortable with that can help kind of transition between these different chords. tricky but it's worth working on and getting comfortable with that thumb going up uh zil says i love watching matt jump from song to song in different genres <laughs> cool thank you uh yeah the uh ricky says i just started trying something with index uh up down strum awesome yeah so you can start you know when you get comfortable with this the next level and next layer is getting comfortable with that index doing basic strumming and there's lots of videos with this I've got a few on my YouTube channel. There are lots here on Rock Class. To start strumming with that index with your down and up, you can also try picking it. All these things are kind of those in the next you know, levels. And then from there, obviously working out like a solo arrangement of it. fun song anyways so I hope that's been you know helpful with seeing how something can evolve and progress as you add these different techniques and sounds um, so if you have a question in chat let me make sure it's on live chat there we go um, I'm also going to check on the forum so every time we do one of these lessons here at rock class 101 there is a forum post and on that forum post you may leave questions that I'll make sure I answer during the lesson um, so in the event you are unable to make one of these live lessons as a member, but you'd like to see your question answered, there is an opportunity there in the forum. I think most people don't know about that. Uh, and so definitely check that out next time if you're wanting your question answered. Um, it doesn't look like there's a question in here right now. Um, and so 
No worries. All right. So uh, looking at the YouTube chat again, um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them just so that you can kind of see. I'm going to play the first part of something and I'm going to start layering it a little bit and just so that you can see how what we just started with can progress into something more. So we start with this. just can continue to progress as you learn new techniques and everything else and to me it's one of the most fun parts about learning the ukulele is you start at this very basic level you go on to other songs other things you learn some new techniques you get some new tools for your tool belt and you go back to that song and add a couple layers and you rinse and repeat over the course of a decade <laughs> and eventually you have something where you're playing a song fun one, right? One of the first songs I ever learned on the ukulele. I was on a trip in Hawaii in 2009. I, I want to say it was 2009. And uh, I bought a Kala ukulele. I was on a trip with my family and I learned that song from a tutorial online. It sounded nothing like that back then. But man, it was just fun. So nothing reminds me more of learning the ukulele, having fun with it, and just that whole experience than the song something. So Anyways, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson and had some fun watching it. Um, <laughs> I see a chat uh, so, with Zill saying, wow, nicely jazzed up. I'm going to put go put Matt's Spotify on after this. I always forget I'm on Spotify and Apple Music. It's crazy. I don't have that arrangement on there, but maybe someday. But thank you guys so much for attending. I hope you got something from this beginner sort of workshop. And if you're a more advanced player, try teaching some friends this stuff. You might notice you'll get better at it too through teaching. I know that's how I've made most of my progress as a player is through teaching others to play. But as always, if you're watching this as a recording and you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time for the next live lesson here on Rock Class 101. We do it every second Saturday of the month at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can go on Google and figure out where that is for your neck of the woods. But otherwise, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Take it easy.